What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, as you can see, we are going to be um, changing our uh, coolant, coolant fluid in here. Um, I'm a bit low, so I'm going to have to add a little bit more. And I'm going to kind of teach y'all how to like measure it because like honestly, if you look at the instruction, like the owner's manual, it's like absolutely whack. But um, I'm going to walk y'all through the easy way to do it and talk about what I want to maybe, uh, how I want to upgrade the coolant system. I've seen some reservoir tanks, some like heat expansion tanks. So um, we're going to talk about that, so let's get into it. Alright guys, so like I said, here is on any of these six gen Camaros, here's where the coolant fill is. And as you can see, I am a little bit I'm a little bit down. Right here you can see it says cold fill. If it'll focus. Right there it says cold fill, and we got that line, so we're about like halfway down. And this one actually has two uh reservoir tanks. So the bottom one is actually a bit low as well. And that one you want to fill up to about halfway. You probably won't be able to see it but it's there's a line that indicates the halfway mark so um, we got to fill that up and yeah so this has been a little bit low um, for a little bit now I honestly didn't even notice uh, for a while also be sure to do this whenever your engine has not been turned on for a while make sure it's cool because um, this is not good to do if it's not so as you all can see in here yeah, we could definitely use some more coolant, which might explain why it's been heat soaking so bad for me. I know in general these Camaros have been having an issue with the, uh, well, the LT4 motors in general with their issues with coolant and cooling down the car itself. But uh, recently, I don't know, my, my car seems to be like overheating like within a few like passes and stuff like that and I gotta let it cool down for a while before it actually starts to get feeling like normal again. So um, I'm gonna put fresh new coolant in here and this is what I'm using today which is what you need is uh, Dex Cool 5050 um, as you can see it says for GM cars um, requiring DX Cool uh, do not add water because it, it's already pre-mixed basically is what that 5050 is for and uh, let's see all you need to know uh, yeah this should be all you need for any 6 gen Camaro I think it's should be the same for every 4 cylinder 6 cylinder or 8 cylinder as far as I know it's all the same exact uh, coolant reservoir coolant system and all that obviously this has more heat exchanges and stuff but primarily to do this part everything is the same and you should be able to use this one on every single one as far as i know as long as it's dex cool 50 50 for gm well you could you, you don't have to use 50 50 but um to avoid you having to mix the water uh afterwards this is just the easiest way and i think this was like 15 bucks or 17 bucks so it's really not that expensive to fill it up for a gallon of it I might need a lot of it. So, uh, yeah, I'm about to put you on the head strap and kind of walk through um, how to do this. So, let's go. All right, so the complicated bit here, guys, is basically, uh, like I said, it does have multiple reservoirs. So, this is like the main one up here, the upper level. And like I said, you want to fill it up to where it says that cold fill. And that's the first thing that we'll do. So, we'll just go ahead and plop it on, open this up. So, like I said, if your car is overheating, you primarily want to kind of look at this first. But, I so said, let's go ahead and get started. And you just want to get as close to that fill line as possible. So, like, just a little bit more. All right, that should be perfect. Set that down right there. Okay, that looks good to me. Okay, and now the how to access the other reservoir tank is right here is this Dex Cool right here. You just pop this open and we're going to need a smaller spout. All right, now this one, we're really not gonna be able to see it. I'm gonna have to like measure it here and there, but there's a line that honestly I can barely see. And I know that y'all will not be able to see, but I will put up a diagram of it for what it looks like on the uh, owner's manual. And uh, y'all kind of see how it is. But we would like to get it as close as possible to that so we can close this. And the thing with this is we're going to leave this one open 
right here um, to make sure it's not pressurized. Make sure I'm on that line. Okay, I am. I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm on that line. I'm barely on that line. I don't know if y'all be able to see it right here, but I'll get the other camera out here in just a second. And y'all will be able to see the, should be able to see the reservoir now. You won't be able to see the line too well, but uh, I guess let's, let's do the next step. And it's actually turning on the vehicle. <laughs> on the instructions you want to run it till this gets about kind of like warm pretty hot it might already be good because it's already well it's warm yeah so we'll go ahead and put this cap back on so that it'll pressurize the system which it looks like it yeah it looks like it's about right because as you can see it start to fluctuate here all right guys, I actually pulled the car out of the garage, as you can see, it's out in the driveway. It's been running for now like 10 minutes, uh, and now I'm letting it just sit here. It is a bit warm. It's kind of hot outside, so it's it's definitely up to operating temps. Uh, I took it for a small little drive just to make sure that everything was fine. Everything seems to be good. It's still at the fill line, just a little bit past it, but I think we'll be all right. And down here at the bottom is what I was telling you, the second reservoir tank. I hope that it focuses. You can see like the, the actual coolant right there. And there's a line, you really won't be able to see it. But yeah, it seems to be okay. Maybe we'll have a little bit better luck with the supercharger and the overheating issues that we're having. Or not overheating, but heat soak issues. Maybe we'll last a little bit more before it starts, uh, starts losing a bunch of horsepower because I saw that these things lose quite a bit of power uh, with just heat soak. Like I'm talking about like over 100 like to the wheel uh, on a C7. So. Um, that's something that I'm gonna be careful of, but I didn't want to touch on the fact about the cooling system. I mentioned this in the video where I talked about upgrading the car um, for the one year, the one year anniversary video. I was talking about doing doing the mods, but I also mentioned doing something to do with the cooling system and upgrading the cooling system. Um, so this kind of like me reaching out. Um, I saw a few people have sent me like a heat exchanger. Um, relocation or like an expansion tank or something like that that goes on the opposite side of the car uh, I was looking into that um, I was also looking personally on my end to look at upgrading the um, radiators and stuff like that uh, the auxiliary radiators that they have on each end in the middle one and I don't know that's pretty much all I've done as of right now I've, I've gone on forums a little bit but they don't touch a lot about trying to cool the car um, with stock mods or anything like that usually it's like meth injection or stuff, stuff like that which is is a possibility I just personally don't want to do that so this is me reaching out to y'all any ZL1 owners or if you know anything about these cars um, be sure to leave a comment down below let me know because I would definitely be interested especially with the mods that I want to do to the car hopefully here pretty soon within the few next few months uh, I'd rather have everything be as safe as possible um, since we're slowly starting to run out of warranty and whenever we do the mods, we're not going to have a warranty. So, um, I would appreciate any info that any of y'all could give me. Um, cause the, the coolant system is, is just not that great on these, on these GM cars. Like these things just heat soak like so crazy. And it just kind of sucks that whenever you go to race somebody, you got to wait for like 30, 40 minutes before you can actually get like a really solid run in. But I don't know a lot of people comment down below telling me how, how bad the coolant system is and how like, uh, even on Gavin's video, I don't know if y'all watch it's just six. I would assume you do, but he had a he did a dyno run and he actually lost um, he gained 25 degrees engine temp on one pull, one single pull on a dyno, and that's just absolutely insane. So maybe we can get that whole situation figured out. But that's going to do it for the video. I appreciate y'all for watching. Any six gen owner, if y'all learned anything new with that coolant system, because it is a bit confusing on the owner's manual. This is a lot more simple to understand, in my opinion, because they tell you it's just like a whole, whole like paragraph explaining how, to, how you're supposed to do it, but this is just so much easier in my opinion. But any six gen owner, I hope this helped you out instead of reading the owner's manual. Um, be sure to let me know down below, comment down below if it did help you out or if you learned something new or if you got any uh, info to help with the coolant system upgrades or anything like that or what do you think I should do. Comment, like, subscribe, and uh, turn those bell notifications on. See you in the next one. RS, SS22, ZL1, slide and a rainbow coupe. Saw your bitch, mouth drop, what it do? Worry about yourself, bitch, who the fuck is you?
Take it to the tree, tear like a limousine When the lights